With Cuban hardware and nowadays even software growing and developing to new heights, have we reached the peak of good cubes? Or can we make them even better? But first, I think it is important to learn what makes a good cube. So join me on this three-part series where we are going to cover everything from adjustability features in modern day speed cubes to discussing lubricants and setups with the head of Cubicle Pro Shop, Ro Hessler, and much, much more. The first episode is on something that defines a good setup. Something without cubing wouldn't be the same as it is today. For the sake of this video, I'll just simply call them loops. Which lubricant is for you? Which lubricant suits which type of cube? How would professionals decide what lube to use in their cubes? How do you decide upon the combinations of lubes in your setup? There are so many questions and we will answer all of them. Yes, all of them. Before I get started, I would like to give a huge thank you to Ro Hessler for making this possible. He gave me so much information on this topic and this video definitely would not have been possible without him. Now, let's get started for real. Firstly, I think it is important to define the type of lubes. There are water-based lubes and silicon-based lubes. I'm sure there are more types of lubricants like a cube spray that no one really uses anymore. <laughs> but we will mainly be focusing on these two types. There might be some reference of some other types of lubes, but these are like the main two types. And where do you apply these lubes in the cube? Well, some of these are core lubes. So you take the cube apart and apply the lube on the springs, screw, the centerpiece, and you know, around the core area of the cube. And all of these parts are, you know, really important parts of the cube because they impact the togetherness of the cube. Um, and also, you know, just bring it all together into one and hold the pieces together. The next type of lube application is on the pieces, but you take the pieces out of the cube. For example, taking the corner and the edge piece of the cube out, and applying the lube on them directly from a syringe. Try to get the lube on the most important part of each piece. For example, the track and the torpedo on the edge, as well as on the sides of the stock. And on the corner, the tracks and the side of the stock, as well as on the body. And then you carefully put the piece in. I would recommend putting the corner in first. In both of these examples, normally a lube with a syringe is used because... Oh my god. Yeah. It's hard to take a piece like this and apply a water-based lube on it. That's just hard and just kind of weird. So, yeah. Normally, bottled lubes are water-based lubes such as DNM, Celeritas, and Compound X, for example. But there are some bottled lubes that are not water-based. For these, you simply pull apart the cube and apply the lube into the cube like so. Dang, things got speedy. Don't forget to put the recommended amount into the cube, but what if you don't follow the recommended lube amount to put into the cube? Well, if that doesn't work, try to add more. And if you added too much, clean the cube out and then add less than the amount you added before. And yeah, Ro explained that very well. He's literally an expert on this. So no comments from my side. And yeah, don't even, don't even ask any questions on that. Anyways, I put up an Instagram story a while back on my Instagram, as if that wasn't clear already. If you prefer lube in a syringe or in a bottle, and bottle lubes were the clear favorite. Rightfully so, because they're much easier to apply. Anyways, I'll move on to the next topic now. Have you ever wondered how relevant core lubes even are these days? With all these premium cubes coming out and, and all these premium lubricants. Are core lubes really even important now? Are they even necessary for your cubes? Nowadays, with so many premium cubes coming out, so many cubers are just spoiled by getting those premium cubes and don't really have the exposure of lubing the core of the cube themselves. Um, 
I have to admit, I fit into that category too. And yeah, it's kind of sad because I tried to lube the core the other day and I totally messed it up. Oh my God. Or these days with so many scientific new things happening to peace lubes, are they enough for your speed cubes? But core lubes are far from extinction because of these three reasons. One, it reduces spring noise in your cubes. Ever had this one cube lying in the corner for years and this one day you decide to pick it up and when you start turning it, it sounds like... So annoying. Well, core lubes really give the cube, the core, a silicon feeling. And that really helps to get rid of that very annoying sound, which is amazing. Branching off of that point, core loops give the cube a very silicon, smooth, buttery, normally buttery, um, very, very satisfying feeling to the cube. Overall, the cube just feels much nicer, much more pleasant, more well set up, and and complete. And three, they just make the cube a lot more reliable in my opinion. It is less likely you get catches, lockups, and just all those things that annoy you in speed solves are probably gonna reduce if you lube the core well. Uh, I do think core lubes are useful. And uh, they do help a lot. And especially a lot of the cubes lately have been, you know, a lot of them have a lot of spring noise sometimes. So it not only just helps with the feel, um, it also helps with that. So it quiets cubes down. So there's really multiple reasons to loop the core. Some cubes are just, just naturally have more spring noise than others out of the box. So a core loop would definitely help those, would benefit those cubes more in that way than better well-designed tensioning systems that don't have as much spring noise. Those might not need a core loop as much in that regard, so. But yeah, overall, I feel like there is some benefit to a core lube if it's a standard uh, spring elasticity system. But sure, for not just cubers who are starting out, but also for more advanced cubers, maybe they just take a 5F5 out of the box, put in a couple drops of Celeritas or and DNM, and, and it's enough. Um, and it works perfectly for them. But would it work perfectly in, say, a 3x3? Does the type of cube impact if you need a core lube on it or not? Let's see what Ro has to say on that. So core loops. Um, so yeah, my opinion is pretty much that any cube with springs will benefit from a core lube. Uh, it's just that some might benefit from it more than others. For example, bigger cubes like five by five and up, I feel like they would feel better with a core lube, but it's just less noticeable than with smaller cubes like a three by three. Uh, but generally I feel like they'll all benefit in terms of feel, it's just less than a small as keep it's bigger. Yeah, Ro explained that very well. Let's just move on to the next topic now. Kind of branching off of the last topic, does the type of cube impact the loop selection on the cube? Like, literally, the same event. Would a different combination of loops work better on, say, the Tornado V2 than the GAN 11M Pro? Interesting question, huh? So these two cubes are characteristically very different. They're just, they're just different, you know, just, just face the fact, oh my God. So obviously they would need a different loop selection to be good, right? Well, well, yes, but then again, not all lubes work on all types of cubes, but, but not always. See, there are some lubes that work really well on all types of cubes, such as DNM and silk and all that. But there are some lubes that work well on some cubes, but really well on some other cubes. You might be a little confused on what I'm saying right now, but to answer this question properly and to also decide which cube lubricant you should buy because there are so many amazing lubricants on the cubicle to buy, let's go through a lot of the cubicle's lubricants that they have to offer. And this will totally top off your knowledge on cube lubes and also help you decide which lube is for you. Me. Let's start off with the most basic of lubes, DNM37 and Silk. Everyone knows them, everyone loves them. They're very well known and very common lubes and are a staple of the cubicle premium line of lubes. DNM37 is known for its long lastingness in the cube. Is that a word? Because apparently it absorbs air 
from the atmosphere and retains it so the loop can last longer in the cube. And it is most known for the immense speed it provides to the cube literally right when you apply two or three drops in the cube. This also shows another point. Water-based lubes take less time to break in than silicon-based lubes or metal-based lubes or other lubes in general. This is because they're very runny and right when you start turning them, they can, they can spread across in the cube very, very quickly. Whereas silicon lubes obviously are not as runny and when you start turning them, they take more time to get around all the pieces. And you know what I mean. Anyways, DNM is amazing for the speed it gives to the cube. First time experience here, yeah? It is also very easy to apply. Moving on to Cubicle Lab Silk, it is very popular for the silk it provides to the cube. Literally though, right when you put two drops into the cube, the cube will become so buttery smooth, so silky, even dampened and controllable. So this lube works really well with DNM because DNM speeds the cube up and this decreases the speed really well because it controls the cube a little more and also gives a very nice smooth feeling to the cube, resulting in a fast but controllable but also a smooth cube and it's amazing. Moving on to the next lube, or should I say, loops. Introducing, for this video, this lube is like two years old. Angstrom Celeritas. Yeah, this lube isn't just one, it is, it is two, or rather has two parts, or two reagents, as the cubicle likes to call it. Reagent A, oh, oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. That didn't happen. Reagent A and reagent B. Fun fact. This lube was made from inspiration from epoxy and silicon curing compounds. Yeah, you really want to know that, right? Reagent A has carbon-based monomers that are cross-linked by reagent B. The, this combination is overall pretty long-lasting too. The lube just fell out of my hands. First, clean out your cube so that the cross-linking would be awesome and it wouldn't be affected by any residual lube or anything that is in the cube. Then add one to two drops of reagent A, do at least two solves so that the lube spreads across the cube, and then add two to three drops of B and immediately start turning the cube so the cross-linking of the carbon monomers between these lubes happens perfectly. Of course, these amounts can be adjusted to your preference. More A for speed and more B for control. So on big cubes, it is recommended to use more B then A, because on big cubes, you probably want more control, so your turning can be precise and your look ahead on point. As for the feeling these two loops provide, the science definitely translates to the performance. It gives the cube a very unique, gliding, swift, quick feeling, though it is still recommended to use some other combination of lube after this to totally top off the cube, perhaps some silk or DNM. So Solaritas is a great, unique loop to have in store, for that unique but satisfying feeling in your cube. The next loop we'll be covering is... You know what? I need a change of setting. There we go. You might be wondering why I'm here with so many plants. Well, Mystic is a plant-based lubricant, the first ever actually. Yes, the cubicle is very innovative with all their lubes. So this is based off the aloe plant and it smells amazing. <laughs> Back to the point, Mystic is awesome for giving the cube a dry smoothness, which is very unique. Also combined with speed. Speed and smoothness are two traits that are not very commonly seen in the same lube, but this gives it pretty well. Furthermore, it decreases the resistance and roughness in the cube. Another thing is this lube does not speed your cubas up as much as something like DNM, but the speed lasts longer than DNM. I didn't try this myself, but after some research, I found out that after applying two to three drops of this to your lube, this cube is ready to go. So this is probably a really good lube to take to competitions. I think this is a great way to describe this lube in the shortest way possible. Speaking of the lube that does not give that much speed, let's move on to a lube that is totally the opposite. So, Lubical Speedy. The next lube we'll be covering. By the name, you can already tell how speedy things are gonna get when you apply this to your cube, of course. This lube is a very nice, light, and runny addition to the Cubicle Premium line of lubes. Two traits that make the cube really, really fast. I can do this, I can do this. Brian Son. This lube will also probably work really well with other lubes that slow the cube down. You should apply more drops to bigger cubes. 
and I would say two to three drops in a three by three should be fine. Obviously, this can be adjusted to your liking. These are just the, you know, recommendation based on the characteristics an average cuber wants um, on these puzzles. And really, I think this is enough to describe the lube. It says two to five drops and break in. So just do that and you should be set. This is probably enough to explain this lube. Lubicle Speedy, great lube. I tested it myself and it definitely speeded up the cube. And yeah, that's it for a lube whose name is literally enough to describe it. But now let's move on to a lube where the name isn't really so. Lubicle One. This is kind of the opposite of speedy because it makes the cube speedy, but, but also controllable. This is achieved by the low viscosity of azeotropic silicane ethers and Teflon. There was no way I was going to remember that, so I had to look on the script. And that apparently makes the balance of speed and controllability on the cube where this lube is applied really, really good. Um, so yeah, that's really all I have to say on this lube. Now moving on to the last lube that you apply like this for this video, Angstrom Compound 10. There was also a compound five, but that is discontinued on the cubicle now, so there's no reason to cover that. Anyways, compound 10 is actually a really, really unique lube. Even though it is watery and runny, it slows the cube down, which is probably surprising to a lot of people. And I tried compound 10 like for the first time applying it myself. And here's my reaction. And um, this cube is pretty fast. Water-based lubricant that is supposed to make the cube slower. Okay, so we're gonna apply a few drops. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> what? Dude, I know this lube was released a while back but this is no joke man like this runny okay this it's a water-based lube and it slowed the cube down what in the world so that shows how unique this lube is it's runny and watery the the sound won't show but but how does that work so apparently this lube uses the attraction of silicon polymers within the lube to slow the cube down and also make it controllable and not that speedy to the point that it is also not draggy, which is insane. Now that wraps it up for all the thinner lubricants in this video. Now let's move on to lube stored in syringes or whatever this is called. Now moving on to the most basic of silicon lubes, weight one to five, different lubes as one can tell. The higher the number, the thicker, the denser the lubes. Consequently, the more break-in time they also need in the cube since they need more time to spread around the cube as I talked earlier in the video. All of these lubes, except weight one and weight two, are great for the core pieces and everything else in the cube. Weight one and two, according to the cubicle, are great for everything but the core. This is because heavier lubes are normally designed for the core since they gave a more heavy silicon type feeling and are designed to also get rid of spring noise and control the cube down. Weight five, one of the most loved lubes of all time, can give the cube a wide range of feelings. Smooth, controllable, fast, you name it. It just depends on how much of it you add and where in the cube you add it. This is why this is one of the go-to loops for cubers because you can literally apply it not just to anything in the cube, but also different types of cubes. So for example, adding it to the core will give a more, a more controllable silicon type feeling, while adding it to the pieces probably give it a faster feeling. Thus, this is a very versatile lube and can also be added to a variety of cubes. Weight 3, on the other hand, doesn't work on that many cubes. I haven't tried weight 3, but it is probably really good to make the cube controllable, but also a little fast at the same time. So as you go down the list, the faster you probably make the cubes. Quite honestly though, I think weight five should be enough at this time and day. Since it is such a versatile lube and provides so much, and for everything else you need, you can just use some other premium lubes, which are obviously a lot to choose from. So yeah, that is really all I have to say on these traditional, very classic lubes that really will be, will be loved forever. Bro, turn, turn the camera, turn the camera. That's better. Now let's move on to something very interesting unique and has somewhat of a mysterious name. Having a rather dark name, but a really positive impact on the cube, Lubical Black.
When a lube is sold with an entire kit on the cubicle, you know it's serious. Apparently, if you get a stain on this cube on your head, it is very difficult to remove. So 100% wear gloves while using this cube, as well as putting a paper towel on your table. This isn't a silicon-based lube, but a thick metal-based lubricant, designed for metal-to-metal -metal or metal-to-plastic contact. Thus, very ideal as a core lube because of its thickness. The core, I mean, core lubes are generally, it's a good idea to only use like thick, the thicker stuff. Actually, this is literally only a core lube. You just need to apply a drop on top of each screw and the top of each centerpiece, and right when you start turning the cube, it will be so fast and smooth at the same time. It really is a very unique core lube. Not many core loops have such a drastic impact on the cube so quickly. This actually took a lot of cubers by surprise when they first used this lube a couple years back. Literally take a super garbage dry cube, apply this lube, and after some turns, it'll be amazing. Lubicle Black is a staple of one of the favorite, actually my favorite, Cubicle Premium Cube Line. Angstrom cubes are simply amazing. Lubicle Black only for 9.99 USD at thecubicle.com. Unless if you use my discount code TANISHDI. Now let's move on to two loops that are literally Angstrom. Angstrom Dignitas and Angstrom Gravitas. Both used in literally every single Angstrom cube. Dignitas is the one with the darkened logo and is a medium viscosity that utilizes micro-level nitrate to create a nice balance between speed and smoothness. The nitrate, when breaking in, gets accumulated in the friction grooves of the puzzle, which protects the cube from damage due to friction. All this also results in a more long-lasting cube, where the smoothness and speed from the Dignitas is retained for a long period of time. Gravitas, on the other hand, the one with the clear logo, is a lot more viscous, and thus gives the cube a much more controllable feeling. This is achieved by using two micro-level, sorry, utilizing micro-friction of two nanomolecules. Yeah, science. A thing I will never get. What did you say? Mo Mom, that was for a video, I'm kidding. So Gravitas can be applied to both the core and the pieces, but Dignitas is mainly for the pieces. You know, the Angstrom loops were released together, the uh, Dignitas and Gravitas, and uh, those work extremely well together. Anyways, moving on to the last lube for this video. Yes, finally, bro. Anyways, this lube is named after, after literally the fastest speed cuber in a lot of events today, the GOAT, Max Mark. Max Fleet and Max Command, both of which are core loops that give very different feelings to the cube. Max Fleet gives a very fast feeling with little drag, while Max Command gives the cube smoother feelings between metal and non-metal surfaces. But even though they're core loops, they can still be applied to the corner and edge tracks and they will work pretty good. The feeling of these two cubes are a bit hard to describe like a lot of other loops, but it is very unique. And if you want cubes like Max Park, I guess these loops are the way to go. Or there's an entire Max premium line of cubes at thecubicle.com. Imagine having an entire premium line to yourself. That's actually lit. Anyways, this about wraps it up for all of the loops. But how do you know which combination of loops to pick after so many options? Well, experimentation. There are so many combinations of lube that it is nearly impossible to list all of them down. DNM, Mystic, and Weight 5, Zelleritas, Silicon, and Black. Speed in, Compound X, Speed in, Compound X. No, I'll just use a non lube cube. So here's my take on it. First, turn your cube and really grasp what kind of feeling you want on it and what kind of feeling the cube already provides. For example, this cube is dry and rough. So, which lube do you want on it? Smooth, controllable, fast? Let's say you want it to be smooth and fast. So, let's lube it with some lubical black. After that, turn the cube and see if you want anything else. For example, add DNM to speed it up, or even Angstrom Compound 10 or Mystic to slow it down a little. You can even look at the setups on the premium cube line on the cubicle and get inspired by the combinations they provide. I would also recommend if you're not good at setting up cubes, get a custom cube from thecubicle.com. A legendary expert will set up the cube and it will literally be exactly what you told them to set up your cube with. One big part of it is experimentation. <laughs> Um, you know, I've, there, especially with Cubicle Custom, so I kind of like have really pretty good experience with like what goes pretty good with what. They, uh, they tell me what to put in it, so I don't really have a say in it. Uh, so from doing Cubicle Custom orders for years, I kind of have a 
that's another great way to figure out what works with what. Also, if you're unsure about the combination of lubes, you can even ask the cubicle customer service what kind, what kind of lubes work well and what don't really work well with one another. And people can always reach out to us and even ask us. We get that a lot sometimes in customer service. They'll be like, does this go well with this? And we'll like, we'll recommend it because yeah, there are a lot, there's infinite really combinations for it. One thing you also have to remember is that core loops do not really interfere with piece loops. They're kind of separate, so you really don't have to worry about the combination there. Core loop and piece loop are obviously like separate. You can kind of put like any core loop with any piece loop, like, you know, <laughs> it's almost natural now, like knowing what goes with what, it's like common knowledge to me. So test your core loop and piece loop separately using the method I just described. Also, some of these loops have a feeling that is very hard to describe, such as Dignitas, Mystic, etc. So as you saw, some of the loops really had the same kind of feelings, as I said. Immense speedy, but really, really fast. Fast feeling controls the cube, but also controllable and control the cube down. And this just goes to show that trying the lubes is the best way to really grasp what they feel like. But there are obviously some lubes like DNM where the, you know, the, it's it's obvious what they feel like. And also there are some lubes that are likely to work well with literally anything, you know, any type of cube, you know, like DNM, silk. But I think you can use this video as a really nice guide. Yes, guided video as a guide. <laughs> That was not funny. To really understand what feelings you want on the cube out of the box, I would recommend lubing the core first and then the individual pieces. And you don't have to lube like every piece. You just lube like one edge and one track and one corner, that should be enough. And then lubes, you just want to squeeze into the cube if the current setup isn't, you know, what you want. You want to, I put the heavier stuff on the inside, on the tracks, uh, usually one or two of them, break that in. And then I open it up get a little bit of the piece lube on there uh, one or two times, break it in and then top it with DNM and do a solver too. Obviously you don't always have to use a core lube as I said earlier, but you know, this is just the order of like, if you want like a complete setup on the cube. Otherwise you just do as you wish. Though obviously there are some lubes that, that work well in most cubes, but not really in some cubes. For example, DNM, Silk and the Pro Shop setup and Angstrom setup normally works well with like almost every cube and every like type of cube but max lubes upon research normally work best on gan cubes and maybe not that good on chi cubes for example as ro told me maybe that's his preference but i'm just letting you know that that not all lubes work well with everything so experimentation is key one big part of it is experimentation <laughs> well that wraps it up for this video i hope this guide was good to help you decide what lube you want in your cube because one setup won't work in every cube by three let's face it oh yeah before you do set up your cube definitely clean it out which will be covered in another video on this series on my youtube channel and you might be wondering why I did not tell the price of these lubes. Well, that is because these lubes are pretty affordable and inexpensive. And normally each lube lasts a very long time. So the investment is awesome. Also, I didn't talk about each lube as in how much of it you need to add to the cube, but really just go by the recommended and adjust if needed. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe to the Cubicles channel. And while you're at it, mine as well, please. 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 You know how much work this video took. Also, when you order from the cubicle, be sure to use the discount code TANISHD for a further 5% discount off your order. Fun fact, sometimes you can even get free loops if your order qualifies for it. For real now, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, bye.